grass that's not a native to Florida or Texas or any in the south. It's an invasive species. You got to bring your warm season grasses back here, let them grow tall enough, and you'll be able to build organic matter because these are massive root systems. Those buffalo, they weren't living on Bahia Bermuda. They couldn't. No way they would have a buffalo herd of 75 million head on Bahia. You probably have uh, buffalo the size of goats, right? Some mutant. But this stuff, you got to get rid of it. You got to get, I mean, it's got to go. They lived on big blue stem, little blue stem, Indian grass, buffalo grass, and about 200 other species of forbs. These ecosystems in the prairies were vastly complex, just like a real forest. You know, down here in the south, we replaced a lot of the longleaf pine, the or uh, I won't call them deciduous forests, I'll call them... Uh, Savannah. Savannahs, right. With what now? The yellow pine plantations and that make all of our ugly decking. <laughs> that's, that's impregnated with copper, arsenic, and chromium so it won't rot and turns into giant splinters so you have to wear big giant boots so you don't get splinters in your feet. But, you know, this is, this is, this is based on carbon and nitrogen. As we eat, as the prey eats the predator, he's eating a protein and energy and he's recycling all those nutrients. They don't get lost in the natural system. They don't get lost because everything is recycled. Nitrogen that's pooped out by the, the, the protozoa that eat the bacteria. And by the way, you have these in your gut. They're called amoebas. You have these in your gut. So this is a gut model. That cat is eating a gazelle. It's loaded in protein. It eats enough of that gazelle to get some energy. And the excess protein gets pooped back out. And that becomes food for the next bacteria, which is the cat, I mean the, the, uh, the herbivore. So it's all about keeping that carbon-nitrogen cycle intact because it's all starting from sunlight. All the energy in the universe, and really the protein in the universe, in a natural closed-loop system is originating from sunlight. It starts it all. What nature has figured out is how not to lose it. That energy is given to us every day for free. As long as that sun comes up, man, we've got a free gift to start this process over and over again. Now these guys, this is a good biological indicator of your garden or your soil. I'd like to see about 25 earthworms per cubic foot, which is one square foot, a spade deep. Dig them out. And you put them out on a, on a tarpaulin and you count them. Count. Now this guy here is Luma, is Terrestris. This is an invader. This is not native to North America. This came in with a, the European colonists. They're not native to here. It's one invasive species I like having around because it's an incredibly efficient uh, soil organism that does all kinds of stuff. Now, just to give you an example, if you've got 2,000 worms, that'll give you 125 pounds of castings, earthworm manure, a year. If I have those 25 uh, cubic, worms, uh, uh, cubic worms per cubic foot, I should say. Cubic worms. <laughs> How about cubic ice? Ice cubes. <laughs> 25 worms per cubic foot. I have a million worms per acre, and that will give me 62,500 pounds of earthworm manure per acre per year. 30 tons. How many people think of that? That's livestock. 30 tons of manure per acre per year, or something you don't even see. All right? So we know they eat one third their body weight in soil, healthy populations just by moving, they're eating soil. I call an earthworm a hybrid between a chicken and a cow. Anatomically, anybody ever dissect an earthworm in high school? Yeah. yeah. And you find out in their digestive system they have what a chicken has called what? A crop. They have a crop and a? Gizzard. That's how, that's chicken's teeth, right? Gizzard is chicken's teeth. It's a little vat there, it's got all that, that, all those stones in there, they grind up their food with their teeth that are the gizzard. Well, earthworm has a gizzard. Now here's what it does. It's also like a ruminant. What's a ruminant do? A ruminant ferments cellulose. It turns it into volatile fatty acids, which are amazing. I mean, you take something like cellulose, which is pretty inert. We can't eat it. Absolutely worthless to us. A ruminant that has four stomachs can take that cellulose, throw it in the rumen. The bugs start working on it, fermenting it, produces volatile fatty acids that are, what's volatile mean? 
They go, they're gases, they go up. They go right through the room and wall, directly into the bloodstream without having to go down the digestive system. Right into the bloodstream. And what are those volatile fatty acids? Acetic acid, which is another word for what? Vinegar. Ruminants that are healthy produce vinegar. It's one of the best things, it's the best tonic you can give humans too. Because by the way, we'll get into this, we're fermenters too, except we do it in the hindgut, down here. The large intestine is a fermenting organ. And it better ferment. Or you've got discomfort. It's called flatulence and cramping. And colon cancer if you don't ferment. So that being said, this fermenting process that's going on here, this earthworm, I don't know if you have night crawlers around here like we have up where I'm at. You go out at nighttime with a flashlight, you know, they're the fisherman worms, right? The big fucking worms are that big. And what they do is they, they big, they, they'll dig holes eight feet deep in the ground because they got to get away from the drought. So they get away from temperature and dryness by going deep down in the subsoils during the hot summer months. They're down there. And then they come out at night. And they'll take a leaf, which is cellulose, or we'll take some corn stover, which is cellulose, or some dead grass, which is cellulose, and they'll pull it down into that hole, and they'll eat it. And they grind it up with their gizzard, and then they do what a cow does. Cow does what after they grind up cellulose? They regurgitate to chew their cud. Well, they don't chew their cud, but they do regurgitate everything. In, in fact, now their cud is the lining of the walls of that earthworm hole. And they take all this regurgitate that was ground up with the grit and the gizzard, and they slime the wall up and down, slime it up and down. And then they come back a few days later after there's enough temperature and moisture, and guess, what's, well, guess what they find growing there? Fungus. Yeast and bacteria are growing in this regurgitate. And what are yeast and what are bacteria? Protein. So they took cellulose, which is almost pure carbon, through an anatomically digestive process and turned it into protein. This is how it works, the protein carbon. Grow food, go food. It's always back and forth. It's a closed loop system. There's no waste. There's no waste. And we do the same thing in our hind guts. And it's really important that we ferment fiber in our hind gut. And we also produce a lot of, one of the three essential volatile fatty acids of a ruminant is uh, butyric acid. There's propionic acid, there's acetic acid, and there's butyric acid. It's the least important to a ruminant. It's the most important to a monogastric human. Butyric acid is the inhibitor of colon cancer in the, in the large intestine. And you get butyric acid by eating fibrous diets of fruits and vegetables, and you're going to love this one, raw cream. Raw cream is a great raw material for butyric acid, the preventer of colon cancer. Right? So it's all about an ecosystem is like a three-legged stool. You can't pull it all apart. It looks like you can pull it apart there, but really it's sort of like Play-Doh with three different colors all goofed up together. You know, you can't really pull this stuff apart. Everything affects everything else. So we want to build humans. What are your yield limiting factors? On farms, it's always like uh, fertility, fertility, and more fertility. No. The first fertile thing that you are focused on the number one nutrient in life on Earth is what? Oxygen. So you manage air. And if you're a human and you've got bad, what? Air management, you're not aerobic, what happens? Daddy and I want to Otto Warburg. Carcinoma of cancer cells. Low oxygen, anaerobic. We're aerobic organisms. Number one nutrient is oxygen. Number two nutrient is water. Number three nutrient now becomes the assimilation of everything, digestion, which in soils we call decay. And last but not least is fertility. And so I look at air, and this is, a, this is a device to measure compaction, called the penetrometer. If I'm compacted, I have lost air. Where does the fence post rot? Top four inches. That's the aerobic zone. There are parts of our ecosystems that are anaerobic, like the subsoil. There's parts of our ecosystem, body-wise, that are anaerobic, which is in the lower gut. The cell, though, the cell, and we're how many cells are we? How many trillions of cells are we? Like 50 trillion cells? 